Good evening, and welcome to the Church of St. Mary. We welcome all visitors and members of our fair area of faith community to this celebrations of this evening's celebration of the liturgy. I'll get it. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. St. Mary's Foundation Gala event up north, the land of 10,000 flannels, is being held this coming Friday, February 1st, beginning at 6 p.m. There is still time to make your reservations. Contact any Foundation Gala member or the parish office at our uh, 2350118 number for further information. Deadline for reservation is noon on Wednesday, January 29th, but there will be walk-ins available if you should end up being one of those individuals. So put on some flannel attire and come and enjoy this very fun evening as a parish community. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So please stand and greet the presence of Christ that we find in one another. Introduce yourself to those around you you may not know. Please join in singing with us our gathering song number 537 in your maroon pew hymnal or on the screens in front of you, all creatures of our God and King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. Gathered as a people of faith, we come to the table of word and sacrament. It is here that we encounter the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, who reminds us that he came to bring liberty to captives, sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. And so we who are often captive to our sins, we acknowledge the liberty that Jesus brings to us in this sacrament today, and we give thanks for the abundance of his forgiveness. As a community of believers, we also rejoice as we welcome Tyler and Danica Ashton, who bring their daughter here to the waters of baptism this night. So let us begin in prayer today, acknowledging our sins as we open our heart to God's mercy. Lord, 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Tyler and Danica, we rejoice with you this day as you bring your daughter here to the waters of baptism. And so as you do so, I ask you as parents, what name have you given your child? And what do you ask of God's church for Tegan Joy? Tyler and Danica, you have asked to have Tegan baptized, and in doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training her in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring her up to keep God's commandments, as Christ has taught us by loving God and our neighbor. As parents, then, do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? If so, please respond, we do. Godparents, are you ready to help these parents in their duty as Christian parents? If so, please respond, we are. Tegan Joy, the Christian community now welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. I now trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparents to do the same. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday, in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. 
and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people. Their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before their Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat, ri ri eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit, 
Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. For those parts of the body that were considered less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And for less presentable parts are treated with greater priority. Whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give, or give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has des designated in the church to be first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then, mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongue? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile the narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who are eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. 
He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. I was in third grade the very first time that I proclaimed the Word of God at Mass. And it was a railroad job. My classmates and the good sister from the school sisters of Notre Dame, why, they all conspired together. And they forced me to do the reading. And I was not like Ezra the high priest in today's first reading. Why, I can still remember that very first moment, trying to utter the very first word of the proclamation of the word of God that was entrusted to me on that particular mass on that particular day. And the good news is, my friends, I did not pass out. <laughs> the bad news was, I was hyperventilating from the very first word to the very last word proclaimed. And I, I made a vow that day. I would never read in church ever again. <laughs> and I kept that vow. Why, I was asked every year by classmates and school sisters of Notre Dame to proclaim the word of God at Mass, and I, I held firm. I said, absolutely not. Until I was a senior year in high school. Why, well, I was even asked, I need to back up by my brother at his wedding. And I said, you may take vows of love for your soon-to-be wife, but I took a vow a long time ago. <laughs> I would never read at Mass. But then, it was my senior year, and I was soon to graduate. And I remember, as was my custom, as I entered the church on the Sabbath day, why I was confronted by the pastor at the time, and he looked at me and he said, Steve, I have no reader. And I looked at him and I said, how does that, your concern, affect me? You remember the reading from last Sunday, don't you? They have no wine. I have no reader. I don't care. <laughs> and the priest looked at me, the pastor at the time, and he said, I want you to do the readings. I said, I took a vow years ago. Not going to do it. He said, you can do it. I said, no, I don't read. He said, I know you know how to read because you're soon to graduate from high school. You're going to read. And read I did. And I didn't hyperventilate. And I sailed through the words with the greatest of ease, even without having looked at the reading ahead of time. And afterwards, the usher, who's in the back of the church, he came up to me and he said, you know, Steve, Oftentimes, I can't hear the word of God proclaimed, but today, I could hear every single word. And I was hooked. <laughs> and here I am today. And I was glad that he could hear every word. Why? Because it's the word of God. I proclaim to you, Jesus says in the gospel today, Liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to announce a year of favor to the Lord, and to set the oppressed free. Jesus, as was his custom, 
went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he was given the scroll. He was given the word of God. He was given the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll, and he made that bold proclamation, liberty to captives, sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Amazing, isn't it? And we are told that everybody there looked intently at him. And then he says, today these words, this passage is fulfilled. What a statement. What a bold proclamation indeed. Because the reality is to set those captive free, to set the oppressed free, to let the blind be able to see why that's the goal. But the first step in reaching the goal has to be the proclamation. It has to be that this is even possible. And so Jesus begins there. He begins with the proclamation and he reminds us that the right words at the right moment can change a life. The right word at the right moment can change a life. And how true that is. All of us can hopefully recall experiences where someone came up to us when we were struggling or we were doubting or we were in fear or whatever it is that we were experiencing in life and they offered to us they offered to us the right word. And it was at the right moment. And it changed us. It lifted us up. It transformed us. It made us look at things differently. It enabled you and I to be able to experience what Jesus was able to make those in the synagogue today experience. And that is what they experienced and what we experience when people have the right words for us is why we experience hope, and we experience joy, and we experience the possibility that there is somehow a newness that can be ours, a new way of living, a new way of seeing, a new way of being, a new way of having our minds and our hearts renewed. That is what Jesus' proclamation and Ezra's proclamation in today's first reading, why that is what this is all about. And yet, Jesus, with the words that he proclaims, is constantly reminding us, if we look at the Gospel of Luke close enough, why Jesus really is less about building the kingdom. If you really think about it, Jesus is less about building God's kingdom here on earth and it's, he's more about telling you and I that it's already here. Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. What does that mean? What it means is quite simply this. And here's the proclamation of the word that I hope is the right word for you at the right moment today so that it can change your life forever. And what is that right word? Well, it's actually a few words. And the words are these. God is at work in and through you. God is at work in and through you. That is the bold proclamation that Jesus came to bring. He announced the fact that the kingdom of heaven is already here. It's already in our midst. It's already in you and in me. We just need to recognize that the work that we do, the prayers that we offer, the anxieties that we have, the accomplishments that are ours, we need to recognize that God is at work in and through all of that. That's what Jesus' proclamation in today's gospel helped those people to see in the synagogue that the kingdom was already in their midst. 
The kingdom was already at hand. The kingdom was already a possibility that is now fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ himself. My friends, you and I in a few moments will receive that same gift of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven is here. It's in our midst. He is already at work in and through you and me. So what difference does that make? Well, the difference is we are many parts of the one body, which means our task is to not be afraid to proclaim the word of God, to not be afraid, whether that be at mass or more importantly in our daily living, you and I are invited to bring the word of God to the people who need it because it's true. The right word at the right moment can change and transform lives. May we be bold proclaimers of the word of God so that everyone might hear every word proclaimed this day. As we prepare to celebrate Tegan's baptism, let us intercede on the, uh, let us call upon the saints in heaven that through their intercession they might lead and draw us closer to the light and the love of Christ. Our response after each of these saints' names will be pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Joseph, Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Saint Catherine, Saint Teresa, Saint Francis, all holy men and women. Let us pray, Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan's spirit of evil, to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness and to bring us into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We now pray for Tegan, set her free from original sin, make her a temple of your glory, and send your Holy Spirit to dwell with her. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tegan, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, our Savior. May he now strengthen you with his power, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And invite the assembly to please stand. Let us now renew our baptismal promises as we rededicate ourselves as followers and disciples of Christ, parents and godparents. I invite you on Tegan's behalf to state these promises for her this first time. So to each of these questions, let us respond, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, this is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Tyler and Danica, is it your will then that Tegan be baptized in the faith of the church, which we have all professed here with you? If so, please respond, it is. I would invite the assembly to please be seated as we baptize Tegan today. Tegan Joy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now anoint Tegan with the oil of chrism, for Christ himself was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So through this chrism oil, she is christened, is made one in Christ. And so we pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, giving you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and has welcomed you into his holy people. Tegan, he now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Tegan Joy, you have become a new creation and you have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity with family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Take and joy, receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light has been entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. Tegan is to walk always as a child of the light. And may she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart so that when the Lord comes, she may go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Tegan, the Lord Jesus, made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God the Father, through his Son, the Virgin Mary's child, has brought joy to all Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine upon their children. Lord, we ask your blessings upon Danica, the mother of Tegan. She now thanks God for the gift of her daughter. May she be one with her in thanking you forever in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is the giver of all life, human and divine. Lord, we ask your blessings upon Tyler, the father of Tegan. He and Danica will be the first teachers of their child in the ways of faith. May they be also the best of teachers, bearing witness to the faith by what they say and do. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, it is a great joy of mine to introduce to you the newest member of our Christian community, Tegan Joy Ashton. Please stand and let us now join our voices together as we offer to the Lord in prayer and petition the needs of our church today. That as church, we reflect unity as members of the body of Christ and be a shining witness to God's law of love for all people. We pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That throughout the globe, we embrace peace and reject violence and prejudice. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we are blessed with the courage to promote God's love for the poor and oppressed in all families, neighborhoods, and workplaces. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the St. Mary's Foundation Gala this Friday will provide an opportunity for us to support the ongoing ministries of our parish and experience the joy of being with parishioners and friends. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick know healing, the grieved be comforted, the lonely be visited, and the wandering and lost receive direction. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died rest forever in the loving arms of Jesus, remembering Bill Peters Sr., Dean Anderson, Caroline, Caroline Motts, Ruth Mae Johnson, and Shirley Mocked, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we find joy in God's law by proclaiming his word and putting it into action, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Tegan Joy, for her parents and family, that as they receive and rejoice in the light of Christ in baptism, that that light might continue to shine brightly in their hearts and lives, we pray. Lord, our God, giver of all gifts, we present to today the gifts of bread and wine and the gift of ourselves. Take these gifts and transform them into the living presence of your Son. Hear us as we offer these petitions. Answer them according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. And invite our children to bring their offering forward. Let us sing together, We Are Many Parts, number 583 in the Maroon Pew Hymnal, or on the screens in front of you, number 583.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God of the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with all your people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let us now pray for our daily bread, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 593, Your Words Are Spirit and Life. Number 593 or in the, on the screen. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, Life everlasting. God's law is perfect, refreshing the soul, reviving the weary spirit. God's rule can be trusted, bringing us wisdom, bringing God's wisdom Our spirit alive, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's precepts keep us, their purpose is right. 
they gladden in the hearts of people. God's command is so clear, it brings us new vision, bringing God's light to our eyes. Your words are spirit and O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. Living by God's truth is holy and sure. God's presence is everlasting. God's truth is eternal, bringing us justice, bringing God's justice to
Tomorrow begins the week of Catholic Schools Week, and so at the request of Bishop Lavore, this weekend at all the masses and all of our parishes in the diocese, a second collection is being taken up uh, to support uh, our Catholic schools throughout the diocese, and so I would invite the ushers to take up that second collection at this time. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Just one other announcement tonight, and that is we are blessed as an area of faith community and as a parish here at St. Mary's. Uh, to be able to welcome tomorrow afternoon Father Bob Robert Koopman, uh, a monk and a priest of the Abbey Church uh, at St. John's, uh, who will be here to do a uh, piano concert um, and improvisation as well. And so we invite you to join us at 2 o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, for that concert, weather permitting, and hopefully everything will hold out and that Father Bob will be able to get here for that concert. So please join us. If you're able to, also last week when I was doing first reconciliation with the second graders, a young boy reminded me that the advantage of this kind of weather is there are no mosquitoes. <laughs> so I wish all of you a very blessed and a mosquito-free week this coming week. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And please join with me in thanking our adult choir for leading us in some prayer. Let us go forth singing number 207 in your Maroon Pew hymnal, Holy, 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 number 207. 